Göttingen University has an excellent reputation in Germany, and a year ago the Max Planck Institute for Solar System Research moved to the campus here, gaining more direct access to the next generation of top-notch researchers. The foyer boasts a model of the comet churyumov gerasimenko affectionately called Churi. The mission to it illustrates the Institute's role in exploring neighboring space, from comets to planets to stars. Experts here are involved in the European Space Agency's Rosetta mission and its groundbreaking Philae lander. One major reason for Rosetta's high profile and exposure in the media is the stunning photographs it's delivered. They were taken with a camera developed at the Institute. The orbiter has been relaying close-ups of Churi back to Earth since November. These pictures are key to solving riddles posed by the comet's bizarre landscape. The eye is our primary sensory organ, the one that provides us with the most information. These images give us background data, which enables us to better interpret other information from measurements, helping us to understand what it really means. You need a special kind of camera to take a snapshot in outer space. This device can take pictures in seven different wavelengths. Scientists back on Earth can use the images to identify exactly which elements make up far-off worlds. A twin of the model is aboard NASA's Dawn space probe, taking images of the asteroid Vesta and the dwarf planet Ceres, which are located between Mars and Jupiter. The designers have to protect their cameras from a wide range of dangers. The challenge with these cameras is that they have to work under very extreme conditions. They have to withstand very high and very low temperatures, as well as cosmic radiation. And they have to be extremely reliable, because once a probe has been launched, there'll be no way to repair them. The institute was founded back in the 1930s, when former managing director Peter Tchaikovsky was still a child. Its scientists initially focused on atmospheric research. In 1946, it changed locations, moving to a small town in West Germany, and two years later formally became part of the Max Planck group of research institutes. Its scientists began launching balloons and rockets to investigate the Earth's stratosphere and beyond. We were very fortunate to have such a talented and dedicated staff. And the whole development of the detectors for the cameras, that was all new territory. It took a lot of tests and trials. Which paid off. Soon the Institute was writing history. Europe's first interplanetary research satellite carried a camera built by a consortium headed by the Institute. And its first images of the unprecedented close encounter with Halley's Comet did not disappoint. As the Huygens lander prepared to touch down on Saturn's moon Titan in 2005, the event was captured on a camera largely built by Max Planck researchers. It was a historic moment in the far reaches of our solar system. And the Institute's contribution to the Mars Pathfinder mission in 1997 even scooped up a German TV award. What does it take to succeed in the field? We need innovative scientists with ideas for instruments that can record exciting measurements. And then we need engineers and technicians with the expertise to turn those ideas into working instruments. And of course, facilities for actually building those cutting edge cameras. There's plenty of room in the Institute's spacious new premises. These workshops are fitted with high-tech machines for training the next generation of pioneering electronic engineers, a vital human resource in the research missions of the future. It's graduation day at the Solar System School, a joint program run by the Max Planck Institute with Göttingen University. It awards doctoral scholarships to junior researchers from across the world, acquiring highly qualified future staff for the Institute. Back inside, a state-of-the-art telescope is currently being designed to supply new insights into the sun's magnetic fields. 
Its mission will involve taking ultra-precise measurements under inhospitable conditions. The instrument will have to overcome major temperature fluctuations, as well as the phenomenon called the solar wind. It's made up of a stream of particles that can cause circuits to short out. So we have to protect electronic components. That might mean hardening them, making them resistant to these particles. Competition for the solar telescope job was tough, but the Max Planck bid got the nod. And the researchers are confident of being awarded further contracts for future pioneering space missions.